So first of all, I just want to thank the organizers for uh, She Can because it's such a wonderful event. And I want to thank them because I get to come with my kids. I didn't leave them at home. I, I get to bring them and they get to see me on stage and feel proud of mommy. I think that this is one of the things kids remember. I think they did such a wonderful job. Uh, they, I think they got all the right speakers. Uh, I think they got um, a considerable number of exhibitors and sponsors to support. And the whole idea of having an event that supports uh, women entrepreneurs is so inspiring because I believe that uh, women, they doubt themselves all the time and they need such encouragement and inspiration. So the event in itself, the idea, the execution, everything that has been done is so amazing and impressive. Uh, well, I was, I was working full time at the time. I had two kids and they were younger by three years. They were about three years old. Uh, I had such a hectic corporate job. I didn't have the time to, to do a lot of things for the hair addict, although I love to. So I had to struggle all the time to find the time to the extent that uh, I think for months I used to stay up till 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. after everyone sleeps and work on the hair addict. The idea was not very well accepted at the time. So if I tell anyone that I'm spending my time doing this, they would make fun or be skeptical or be sarcastic. So I did not exactly find the kind of encouragement that I would need if I'm putting this amount of effort with no um, with no outcome at the time. Uh, third, I was not tax savvy at all. Till now, I'm not tax savvy, by the way. To the extent that once, when I uh, when I was looking uh, for uh, the name of a friend, I typed on my wall looking for a friend, and everyone saw it. <laughs> so uh, I I was not tax savvy. Still, still not. <laughs> So those are obstacles that I face um, and uh, whenever you start anything new along the way you find several uh, but alhamdulillah we managed to overcome several of them and uh, we're, we're getting bigger. Uh, what I would like to think of the hair addict and what we always talk about uh, with the team uh, working for it is that it's like a social movement, it's not a business, it's some sort of a social movement because the vision is related to women loving themselves enough to find the time to take care of themselves in natural ways. It is about women loving themselves enough to eliminate any um, kind of association related to having sleek or non-natural hair. Uh, it, it relates to a lot of things that touches uh, that touch the beliefs of people. Uh, and so I would like to think of it as a social movement that started and in order to get bigger and to continue, it has to monetize to spend on itself. Uh, so, and whatever projects we started in the hair addict, whether manufacturing of products, whether having a very big event, the Natural Hair Fest on April 12th is the coming one, it was out of um, making the conversion to natural heads or from people having like unnatural or heat treated hair to having natural hair. So whatever initiatives we took were out of converting the market as fast as possible, no, not were out of making money as fast as possible. So I would like to think of it in the first place as a social movement. If you're going to start uh, something private or if you're going to work on something that is not corporate in which you don't have a boss to, to thank you and to recognize you, you have to work on something that you love. So that if you fail every single day, you don't feel you are failing, you feel you are succeeding because you are trying to make your dream come true. So the inspiration comes from the fact that I'm working on something that I like and I spent years before working on stuff that I hate. So believe me, I appreciate that I'm doing something that I love now. Second is that when I meet people on the streets, at the school, uh, wherever, they, they come to me and they go like, I did for my daughter what you advised us to do and it made a difference to her. So this to me is yeah, super encouragement. It makes me feel that it's all worthwhile and it makes me feel that whatever we're doing is, 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 is success. Uh, well, I was, uh, I was in a corporate job when I went heat free and it was not exactly uh, something that is very common, especially that when you're not, when you, when you're, when you don't have natural hair um, and, you, and you use heat, your hair when you leave it natural, part of it is straight and part of it is curly, so it doesn't look uh, the best to the girl that is leaving it natural. It looks great to other people, but to the girl itself that is leaving her hair natural, it doesn't look that great. So I was having self-doubts, of course, but I, I, I thought to myself it builds character. So if you listen to what people have to say, they don't like what you're doing and still you go on with it, knowing it's the right thing to do for you, then it, you're building your character. And actually with time I started taking or paying at less attention to what people say about the way I dress, the way I talk, expressing my opinions. 
So actually, I built my character. So I will not tell people um, in the way to conquer the transitioning phase when you leave your hair natural is to use any sort of product. I will, I will only tell her, uh, think of the end in mind that you're doing it for yourself and you're building your own character. Uh, well, we, the Hair Addict has a vision uh, that is related to the women in the Middle East, not only in Egypt. So we want to expand and to spread self-love and to, uh, to convince women that they are beautiful the way they are outside Egypt. So we want to expand into the Middle East, the Gulf area. Uh, we want to have our celebration, the Natural Hair Fest, not only next April in Cairo. We want to have another one in Gulf, be it in uh, Emirates, be it anywhere else, but we want to do that. So uh, we want to convert people more to being natural or women more to being natural and actually we want to spread the message that um, self-care is not gender uh, specific, it is gender neutral. So we find a lot of young uh, guys now wanting to take care of their hair but they feel ashamed, they feel it's something that is associated to women while we believe it, it's gender neutral. So we want to have that as well, to have uh, a great part of our audience as males, not only females. The concept of self-love and investing the right amount of time and, uh, and care does not only apply to hair, it applies to everything. So if you're doing, if you're uh, using um, solutions that are only temporary and that are uh, considered easy gains for your hair and it's, it's ruining its health, the same applies for your skin, the same applies for your wellness in general. So um, we have a sister platform that is called the Skincare Addict and we are using exactly the same methods we are using for hair care and we believe that the, the concept of self-love and taking the time and energy to do things right, not to uh, go to quick wins, applies to everything including hair, skin and whatever comes in the future.